Okay, both of these will be going inside a baby gift basket, and the theme of that gift basket is going to be girl balls leopard print. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is decide what type of image we would like to place onto our brush and comb set. So we already know we're going to do the baby, the girl balls leopard thing. Okay, so now the background I would like to be leopard. And the first thing we need to do is measure out how big we would like our image and what shape. So if you notice, it's like a teardrop shape, okay? So what would you what you would do is you would go over to let me put this down since we already know what we're doing. We're gonna go over to where is it says image, and we're gonna click image, and then up up at the top, you're gonna click teardrop. Okay, once you do that, all the images of teardrops appear. And we are working with Cricut D Design Space, okay? So you just simply go and decide what shape will fit into here, okay? And now I had previously already did this um, a while ago for a, pro um, a project that I was doing. So I can't remember exactly which one I had used. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember. I believe it was this one. I think we used this one, but I'm not going to go ahead and click it because, I, like I said, I already done this before, so I already have it set up to how I want it. But for video purposes, again, this is the shape we want. So this kind of is similar to this. So you would click this, insert it, and this is the shape that you're going to go with. Now, I think this is actually different. So, okay. But anyway, we're going to... Okay, then once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this screen. Now, let's go and find the background that we want to place on our common brush set. So, we're going to find the image from Google. So, you're going to go ahead and click on Google. And then you want to type in animal print. Okay, and it already popped up, animal print background. And then we're gonna hit image, images. And it shows you all the images of animal prints, okay? So then you're gonna go ahead and click on the one that you like, okay? So this is the one I think I um, already, yep, this is the one. And okay, and then once you find the image that you like, you go ahead and right click, save image as, and then you going to save it as whatever you want. Now, I had previously already done this, so I saved it under animal print. And then you'll hit save, okay? So once you do that, it'll save your image. Then you're going to go back to Cricut. Remember, we minimize the screen. And then we're going to hit upload, okay? And then you're going to hit upload image. Then we're going to hit browse. And then we're going to find the, um, the image that we just saved, which was animal print. You hit open. That's the print that we chose. So you're going to hit complex. You're going to hit continue. And then you're going to tell asking you if there's anything you would like to erase, which we're fine with the image as is. So we're going to hit continue again. Then you have a choice between cut image or print then cut image. We're going to do the print then cut image. Okay. So you're going to hit that. Then you're going to hit upload. All right. Now, like I said, I had previously already done it, but for the video purposes, you know, we're going to go ahead and hit up, click the image that we would like, hit insert image, and there we have it. Now, 
And you see how small the leopard print image is. So I'm going to go ahead and get, make it a little bit bigger by going to the bottom right hand corner with this. It has the two arrows. I'm just going to click on it and hold it and pull it bigger to the size that I want. Now, I don't need it too big. We just want the size of this teardrop, okay? So once you get it to the size that's, you know, comfortable with this, then, you know, we're in there. Okay, now if you notice, if I try to move this over, it goes behind my lipper print. We don't want that. We want the teardrop to be in front, okay? Now, in order to do that, you're gonna come up to the top where it says arrange, and you're gonna click it. And then it says send to the back, move backwards, move forward, send to the front. We want to have it to the front. So we want to send it to the front. So we're going to click send to the front. So now when you move the teardrop over, it goes directly to the front of the image, okay? So it's on the front of the leopard print, okay? So once those once it's just like that, we're going to have to slice it so we can get the shape we want on, I mean, get the leopard print, the shape that we want. We want the leopard print to be, the same shape as this teardrop. So you're gonna select both of the images and then you come down to the right, the bottom right hand corner. Now you notice that the slice button, that's the button we need, is not highlighted, okay? Now, we gotta figure out why that slice button is not highlighted. Now I know that when you hit the slice button, it you can only slice two images at a time that's it so that means it's telling me is this that we're highlighting is more than two so i'm gonna take them apart Wait, hold on. why is it not let me because we did not do nothing okay now cricket space is acting up okay i'm gonna back it up sometimes that'll help there we go now, if you look over here where it says the teardrop, it says basic cut, basic cut, and it's two different, two different images right here. So that means we already we're gonna click that, and we're gonna hit ungroup. Once we hit ungroup, we can now move these into two separate pieces. Now, all we need is the shape of the teardrop. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this teal colored one and keep the tan one. Now, we're going to move this back over on top of the leopard print. I'm going to highlight both of those. And then I'm going to go back to the bottom right-hand corner and hit the slice button. So now, we got what we need. We can go ahead and delete this. Pull that away and delete that. Okay, now like I had said previously, I had already done this before for a previous project. So, I can't remember exactly what teardrop I had used. But this is the one that is the exact same that will fit onto my comb and brush set. So, this is the image I'm going to use. So, I'm going to use this as my template. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete this leopard print. I'm going to upload it again. Now I wanted to um, make it a little bit bigger. I'm actually going to duplicate this because this is the one. This is the size. This is everything I need. Okay, so I'm going to basically go over what I have done right here. So I'm gonna duplicate that. So now I have two. So I need everything to be the same way as this. But remember, I said we're gonna do the leopard print girl boss. So I'm gonna go back to my leopard print and I'm gonna enlarge it. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to this image over on the right-hand side that's already done. And I'm going to enlarge that so we can see what we're working with. Probably don't need it that little. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let's see. A little bit smaller than that. Right there, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click the image that's already done. And I'm going to hit un uh, unflatten. I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm flattened. That way I can move all the pieces off and get the shape that I need. See, this that's the teardrop that I... Okay, well, too late now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't need that, but I do need this one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I want it on top of my leopard print. 
okay? I'm gonna highlight both, remember, we're gonna do two at a time. And now I'm gonna go to the bottom right-hand corner, hit the slice button, and it's gonna cut out the leopard print for the exact same as this teardrop. And then I'm going to click the X at the top left-hand corner, because we don't need that anymore. The same with the leftover of the leopard print. Click the X, and this is what we need. All right? Now, these are the, the pieces that we need, but this girl boss, I don't want her. I want a different one. I want to go, and I had already, and it's the same process. You find the image you want. Okay, I already got the image that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and hit upload. Okay, and I'm going to say view all. And I'm going to go ahead and find the image that I would like to place on top of my leopard print. And she is right there. I'm going to hit her, insert it. Okay, now you see how big she is? All I'm going to do is go at the top where it says height. And I am just going to erase the height and just make up a size. I'm going to say 2.5, just a size that I can work with. See, it's kind of small, but it's not the size that I want. This grow balls that's on the right-hand side, that's the size I want. So I'm going to click on her to see how big she is, okay? She is 1.902, okay? So I'm going to click on the image that we just uploaded, and I want her to be the exact same size as her. So I'm going to go up to the top where it says height, click that, erase the size, and put 1.902. That's how big I want her. Now, I'm keeping this the same where it says girl boss. And I'm going to move it. See how it's in the back? I want to send it to the front. Now, if you notice, it blends in together. That does not look right. But I want this image where it says girl boss. I want that on top of it, on, on the brush and comb set, okay? So I'm gonna move the girl boss to the side. Now you gotta figure out how can we make that show? We need a background. We need a background that goes with the leopard print. So we're gonna rock with gold, okay? So what you're gonna do, as I'm gonna minimize the screen, go back to Google, And we're going to type in gold background, okay? Glitter. Okay, that's a, that's a good one. Gold background, background glitter, excuse me. So you click that. And we're going to hit images. Okay, now it shows you all types of pretty gold glitter. So you just click on the one you want in the same process. You're going to click on right Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, that was wrong. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and right click it, hit save image as, and then you save it under what, whatever you want. I had already done it previously, so now let's pretend like it's already saved, which is, is saved, but you know. So go back to Cricut, you're gonna hit upload, and then you're going to hit upload again, then hit browse, then you're gonna hit gold, because I saved it under gold, then you're going to hit open. Okay, then we're going to hit complex. Continue. Continue. Okay, and then we're going to do the print and cut image. And you're going to hit upload, but I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. Right? So, let's go ahead and... say that we already did that so I'm going to hit we're going to upload this insert image you see how big it is so I'm going to go down to the bottom right hand corner where it has the two little arrows hit that hold it and drag it towards the center to make it smaller to the sizes that I want so about right there is pretty good then uh, you see how I got girl boss now I want the girl boss black right but we also need it in gold. So I'm going to go ahead and hit where it says girl boss. I'm going to go to the top right hand corner where it says duplicate. And then I'm going to hit that. 
Now it's duplicated, and now we got two images. I'm gonna bring one of the girl bosses on top of the gold, just like that. Now remember uh, to slice it. We just what we want to do is slice it because we want this exact image, but we want it in gold. Okay. So remember, we're gonna only do two images at, at, um, at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight those two. Go down to the bottom right hand corner, hit slice, and it cuts it out for me. So now I can go ahead and hit the X and remove the leftover gold and hit the black grill balls and we don't need that no more and hit the X and remove that. This is what we want, the gold. Now we cannot put this grill balls. Now we want this black girl boss to go on top of this girl the girl boss gold however i'm gonna show you let's arrange the black we're gonna send that to the front it's not gonna really show right so in order to fix that because we want the gold to be the background we're gonna go ahead and hit this gold box the gold girl boss we're gonna hit duplicate that a few times so Remember, we're going to go up to the right-hand corner, hit duplicate. We're going to hit that about mm, three times. One, two, three. Okay. Now, I'm going to move. That's our first one. Now, all we're going to do with the other ones is just layer it on top, kind of shifting each one just a little bit to make it thick. That's what we're going to do. Take the second one. It doesn't, and we're gonna. It goes in the back. You can either arrange it in the front, however fits for you. But I'm gonna work with it as is. I don't feel like doing all that, so we're gonna work like this. So I'm just gonna slightly adjust it like that. Go up, get another one, do the same exact thing. Slightly adjust it. Not much. We still want it to look decent. So just like that. Let's hit the last one. Then. Bring it down, slightly adjust it to make it thick. That's what we look like. Now you see it looks weird. That's okay. That's what we want. Now we're going to go ahead and hit the black one. And we're going to send this in the front. We're going to hit arrange at the top. And we're going to hit send to the front, which is located at the bottom. We're going to hit that. Which now we can move this directly on top. And you see how thick it is. Now we rocking. Now we can we in there. This is what we want. This is what we want to look like. This is what we want to stand out on that leopard background. So now this is since that's where we at. Let me make sure that's how I position the way I want. Mm. Let's see, let's see if I can off center it a little bit. Let's see. Okay, that'll work. Now I'm just gonna highlight all of those together. Go down to the bottom right hand corner and hit flatten. And that's gonna glue all my pieces together. Now we're gonna move this all the way over on top of our leopard print. Look how pretty that looks. That's what we want. Now, we're going to take our boss baby little girl that we already sized to the perfect size, right? And we're going to move her onto the image. And this is what she looks like. That's what we're going to rock with, okay? Now, I'm going to highlight all the pieces that we just did. Go down to the bottom right-hand corner and hit flatten again. Now it glued everything together. So when I try to move it, everything is stuck together. When I print it, everything is stuck together. All right, so we, we are good there. Now remember this over here on the right hand side, the pink one, this is the size I need. This is already measured. So I already measured. Remember I had told you, you have to measure this, which I did previously and it's two and a half inches. So I'm gonna come over here on the leopard print one, click it. Go up to the top where it says that H, which represents height. Now, do not unlock this because we want it to all match up together. We want the size to match up together, the width and the height, okay? So if you unlock it, it'll stretch it, and no, that's not what we want. So keep it locked. 
So I'm gonna again go up to the height, and that's all we're gonna change it. We're gonna leave the width as is, and I'm just gonna change the height to two and a half. Okay, so we're gonna erase that and hit 2.5. Now, this is the height. I mean, this is yes, this is the height. This is the exact size that we want. Okay, so this is what I want. I'm gonna X that out. Okay, now. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Now, I already did a previous pass fire, so this is what I'm going to use, okay? I'm going to try to copy that one. So, again, I got to figure out what I want for the girl boss pacifier. Um, I don't want to do the leopard print for the background again. I want to rock with the gold, so that's what we're going to do. Since I heard already upload the image of the gold background, we're going to do it again. Hit upload on the left-hand side at the bottom where it says upload. Find the image that you would like. This is the background we're going to rock with with this gold. Hit it, and I'm going to hit insert. See how big it is? Now we're going to make it small. Again, go down to the bottom right-hand side where it has the two arrows and... Hold it down and make it the size you wish. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit this pacifier, duplicate it, because this is the size and everything that I need, okay? The other image that we just um, did, I mean, you know, made a copy of, I'm going to go ahead and make it bigger so we can work with it easier. So, that's this is what we're going to rock with, okay? So... I am going to make this gold image a little bit bigger so we can, that's pretty good right there. That's good. Now I got to upload that um, little girl again. You got two options. You can either um, flatten this and use the little girl and duplicate her, but that's doing too much and I don't want to mess up my image. So I'm going to go ahead and upload her again. Hit upload, hit view all so I can find, find her. Go down to where she at. Um, there she is. Make her the size I can work with. So I will say 2.5 for right now. Make her small. Okay, so we're going to move her out the way for now. Now, the image that we just stretched out, I am going to unflatten that. Because we're going to use these pieces. Okay, so see where it says, you know what? And okay, now the brush set that we just used, I'm actually going to duplicate that now, which I should have did and wasn't thinking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and duplicate that because I need the girl boss sign. Okay? So, so this is what we need. So I'm going to move that to the side so it won't get mixed up. Okay, so go ahead to the other one that we just made a copy of. And I am actually going to unflatten that. Bottom right hand corner, hit unflatten and move the pieces. Just like that. Okay. Cool. Now, I don't need this teardrop right here. We ain't working with that. So I'm collecting that off. But I do need this. And, I, and well, I don't really need the little girl because I got it right here. But okay. So now I'm going to go ahead where this blue circle is. And I'm gonna move it to the, I'm gonna move it over to where the um, glitter background is. Go up to the top, hit arrange. We're gonna send it to the front. Highlight both of them. Slice that. Get rid of the extra gold background. Get rid of the blue circle because we don't need it anymore. This is what we want. We want that circle. Okay, now. I'm going to take this boss baby, see how big this is. Matter of fact, is this on flatten? Okay, so first of all, this girl boss still got the gold background on it. We don't need the gold background on this, okay? So we go back to unflatten, and I'm going to unflatten that, okay? And all I want is the black. So I'll move that up here. The rest of this, I'm going to click off. I'm actually going to highlight it, and it's going to collect all of them we don't want and get rid of it. Okay, so the, this is what we need, the girl boss. 
Now, I want this girl boss to be the same size as the boss baby right here for the boy. It's 0.823. Go to the girl boss, and we're going to make it 0.823 for the height. Keep it locked. 0.823. Don't worry about the width. It'll automatically measure up together. So, it was, we was already in there. Okay, which is good. So, I'm going to move this over to the circle. We want that girl boss sent to the front. Go up to the top. Where's the range? Hit the range. Go down to the bottom and hit send to the front. Okay? So now that's where we need it. Now I'm going to put it down like that. Okay, let's hit the girl, ball, the girl boss that we need, which is her. And I want her to be the same size as the boy. So hit the boy. It's 1.874. Go to her. 1.874 for the height. 1.874. So there she go. She look kind of big. Let me double check. 1.874. Yeah. 1. 1.874. She look kind of big to me. Okay. We're going to move her. See how it goes to the back? We're going to arrange her to the front. Send to the front. Now you see how the girl boss sign went to the back of her. Now we want her. We want it the girl boss be to the front. So let's see if we can click the girl boss. And we're going to send, see how it's actually highlighted. You can't really tell, but the girl boss sign is highlighted. So I'm going to hit arrange. We're going to send that to the front. That's how I want it. So the girl, the gold background is in the back. The girl boss's um, image is in the middle. And the girl boss sign is in the front. So that's how I want it. Now I want to arrange this where... She's kind of like holding the girl boss sign, but I want it to be centered and look decent. And, you know, I like the way that she's pointing at the sign. So kind of like that where it says girl boss, which is kind of cute. So she's kind of, so I like it like that. I think that's fine. Okay, I think we can go with that. That's fine. Um, I'm trying to debate if I should make it a little bit. No. I'm going to leave it as is. Okay. So, once I got it the way I want, highlight everything. Flatten. Now I can move the whole entire piece. Now, however, the pacifier that I had previously done, which is the, the blue one for the boy, was for a complete circle, which was... The same size but this one is not a like a full circle it's kind of stretched out so i'm gonna unlock it so we can stretch it out just a little bit so i'm gonna hit the bottom right hand circle with the arrows and kind of stretch her out just a little bit just like that okay and i'm gonna rock with that now i'm gonna hit it and i'm gonna go ahead and take my ruler and measure how big because this is a different pacifier and I'm gonna go ahead and measure. Now it says an inch. I do say an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit one inch for the height. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the lock button to lock it back. Cause I don't want the width, I want the width to match up with the height. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the height, and we're just going to change the height to one inch. And there we go. That's the size. But see, this is how big is that 0.75? Because sometimes when you print it out, even though you measure it, it, it doesn't really. So I'm going to go ahead and make the girl one the same size, 0.75. So I'm going to go back to her and hit 0.75, 0.75. Okay, so that way I know for a fact it'll fit on there. Even though they're different pacifiers, I feel more comfortable with her like this. So I'm going to keep her like that. So we're good like that. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. So now I got the girl boss brush set and the pacifier. 
Now everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and delete. Because I don't need none of this. All I wanna print is this. Now, I had already previously done the, the thing, I mean, the image previously. So I'm gonna use this one, the first one I did, even though, you know, okay, so we're gonna click off of that. And these are the two. I just wanted to show you how to do it. So we're gonna rock with these two, okay? Now, the material that I will be using to print this out will be water slide paper. And I'm gonna use clear water slide paper because, I mean, yeah, the white water slide paper you use like if it's a color background or whatnot. But since the background that we're gonna be working with, I'm just trying to show you, it is white. We're gonna use clear. So, this is what we're gonna rock with. So you're gonna hit make it. And this is what it looks like. Now, if you notice on here, you got all this leftover. Now, usually I would put all types of images on this water slide paper because I do not want to waste this paper, okay? I want to use up all of this, all of it. But since we're just doing this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and waste my little paper. It's just because of this video, okay? So I'm gonna show you what the water slide paper looks like. Oh, let's see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. Woo, I thought we ran out. Okay. This is the water slide paper that I use. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. This one is clear. And this is for inkjet printers. It comes with 20 sheets. And this is what we're gonna use. Okay, so now in my printer, I have it empty. I do not put any other paper or nothing in there. I just put what I use. So I don't want it to mess up. I don't want, you know, so I just use one sheet. So we're only rocking with one sheet today. That's all I'm putting in that printer is one sheet. In my, in my printer, you have to put the paper, see the glossy side? You got to flip it to the back. And I put it in like this. Okay, that's just with my printer. I don't know about anybody. Like if yours, you, you know how you, well you know you should know how your printer works. But this is how mine's work. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. Okay, now we good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Send to printer. Now, we want one copy. That's all we're doing. Now, I ask you if you want to leave the bleed on. Okay? I'm going to leave the bleed on. The only time I really turn the bleed off, and the bleed is when, okay, if you turn it off, it'll leave like a white background. When It's kind of hard for me to explain, this, explain it to you. I have to physically show it to you. But I'm not going to turn my bleed off. I'm going to leave it on. Okay? Because it's fine. It's fine right now. But like I said, if you turn it off, it leaves like a white border around your image. That's what I mean to say. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to go ahead and hit print. Okay, now let's ask you what material are you going to be using. I just hit cardstock. It's fine to hit cardstock. Even though we're working with water slide, I always just hit water. I mean, I'm excuse me card stock i'm just hit light card stock okay and that's fine so and that um prepare our cricket maker to cut out the image so 
Once it prints out, this is what it looks like. Now, remember I told you, now I'm kind of sad and hurt my little feelings because I got to waste all my paper. But for this video, because I love y'all, I'm going to go ahead and waste my paper. But this is what the image, look how pretty that is. That's cute, ain't it? Yes, that's what we're going to rock with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it, and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay. I am back, I am back, I am back. Now we're going to the next step. Now we already printed out our image. Now we have um now what you do is you put the material onto your Cricut pad, which I had already done. Now I load it into my Cricut machine, and all I'm going to do is hit the blinking arrow. Oh, I didn't catch. I'm about to start that over. See? I'm trying to you gotta make sure it's our way and then we're gonna hit that again. Okay, let's start over. Okay, hit the blinking arrow. There it goes, blinking. Make sure that your material is all the way in. The first time it was not, that's why I didn't take. So once it's all the way in, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna hit the blinking C. And it's gonna cut it out. Once it cut it out, I'll be back. Okay, now I'm about to talk about um, the image is ready to go. What I had done was after we cut out the image on the Cricut machine, you have to seal it. Because if you don't seal it and you place that image in the water, the ink is just going to run right off. So this is what I use to seal the image. It's Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear Coat. And yes, I do one good coat of this onto my image. And then we'll be back with the next step. Okay, so now since our common brush set is out of the package, um, we're going to remove this image. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You necessarily do not have to remove this image, and you can just place a vinyl sticker right on top and call it a day. However, I want that professional look. I want that wow factor. I want it to look like it, it. this is how the brush is meant to be. So that's why I like to use the water slide method, okay? Now, in order to get this image off, what I will be using is nail polish remover. Yes, nail polish remover. But, however, not just any old ordinary nail polish remover. It has to be 100% pure acetone, okay? So this is what we're going to be using. All right, so we're going to just put some on our cotton ball. And simply just wipe off the image. Now, depending on what brand of brush you're using or whatever you're working with, sometimes you got to put a little bit of elbow grease, okay? Sometimes it comes right off. It all depends. And you want it nice and clean. We want it nice and clean. And we're just going to work it, work the image, see how it's coming off nice and easy? See that? Now, this uh, now my mistake was I put too much acetone on this cotton ball. You don't want a whole lot of a a acetone on your cotton ball because you don't want it running all over the place, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put this down since I already noticed that it's too much. And let me see if I can clean that a little bit. I'm just wiping up some of that acetone. I don't want it dripping all over the place. Okay, so I'm just going to put a, see how it still has a little bit of residue on there. From the you know the red residue, I want it completely white and clean. So I'm gonna add just a little teeny tiny bit of acetone to this cotton ball, just a little bit. I don't want it dripping everywhere. I don't want it soaking wet. I just want to clean up the rest of that residue, and we good. So you want to make sure. Now if it gets in them crevices where we can't really get it with this cotton ball, I'm gonna go ahead and get a Q-tip. But I'm gonna see how it works. I see it what I can do with this. So this is seem like it's doing pretty good so I don't have to go get my Q-tips. We want it all nice and clean. There you have it. 
nice and clean. You don't want no residue. You want all of the image completely off of the brush. You want it all white, just like that. Okay, now we're about to go ahead and place the image that we do want onto the comb and brush set, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and pitch this. We're done with that. And I'll be, we'll be back. Okay, now we're ready for the next step to placing the image of our choice onto the brush. I will show you how to do that. The tools that we will be working with is we need, I'm going to use a pair of scissors because I have to trim up anything and trim the image. Okay. Tweezers. This little punchy whole thing. So when we place the image, in case there's an air bubble, I can't get out. I could just punch a little hole in it and smooth it right on out. And then this little squeegee tool that you get from Dollar Tree. It's like a, a plastic tip on there. And as well as this, I think you get like two of these in a pack. This is also from Dollar Tree. The scissors and the tweezers that I'm be using can't, um, it's like a Cricut set. So let's get it. And then we've got, of course, our little container of water, warm water. So all I do is simple. Just place the image right directly into the water. You don't have to let it sit for a very long time. Okay, now we're going to test the image to see if it's kind of, if you can move the image. If you can't move it, it yep, it's, it's getting there. I'm going to soak it just a little longer. Okay, we should be good now. I'm going to go ahead and remove the image out of the water. Work it on the paper. Make sure you can slip it. Yep, we're good, we're good. Okay. So, you know what? I don't know if it's going to work now. I'll try it anyway. We're just going to go ahead and place the image onto the brush. And work the image onto a brush. I'm going to take the squeegee. So that's what we're looking like so far. I'm going to take the squeegee. And go ahead and smooth it out. Make sure there's no air bubbles. Now, what I did notice is that, but um, I don't really. Well, with this clear, this Rust-Oleum clear gloss, it kind of I don't know, because that's not the product I usually use. But this is the only one I could find. But we're going to make it do what it do. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about it because I really, you know, I don't know if I put too much. But the edges ain't the really, it kind of tore up the edges a little bit. I don't know if that's because of the product that I use or I just put too much. So I'm going to leave that alone. But anyway, our image is on there. We're good. Now I'm going to let this sit and let it dry for a minute. So we're looking good. And I'm going to let it do what it do. I mean, it's going to work because, like I said, we're going to blend out the edges. So, you ain't going to see that. So, I'm going to leave it as is. Now, another thing I noticed. There's a couple of ways to place the image. You could have did it the way I did it, which I usually don't do. But, however, I'm not going to lie. I try to be slick with it and go ahead and do it this way. Because I'm not, a, like, a lot of people are real good with water slides. That's my part where I really have to practice water slides. So the easiest way for me to put on a water slice is when you on the computer and you make your image, you want to flip it, the image to the, um, and I might, I might have to redo this video and show you, but yeah, you flip the image where the words will actually be upside down or backwards, should I say, 
and then you can just slide the image right on. So I might have to redo this video and show you that way as well, or you can do it this way. Now I got lucky this time and it can't, it, I, I didn't really have a problem. Like, like I said, the edges did kind of tear up, but I think I have too much product on there. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead with the next step. Okay, now let's get back to our comb and brush set. Now, I'm going to go over the tools that we're going to need to do the next step. Now, we already placed the image onto our brush. We're going to do a recap so you can see. I'm going to show you up close what it looks like. That's what we're rocking with right now. Now, we want to coat it. This gives it that professional look. We want a shiny coat over the brush. Okay? So, the product I will be using is... Crystal Lac. This is my bright tone. I pour the bright tone inside like a little ketchup and uh, uh, the little ketchup and mustard container. I can't even remember where I got these from. Some little dollar store and I found these and I just picked it up and I poured it inside of here. The consistency is real liquidy and watery. Um, it's nearly as thick as epoxy. But I like this. As you notice, I'm not wearing gloves. This is toxic free. That's why I like um, Bright Tone. But I do not use this on my other products. A lot of my other um, products, I do not use a Bright Tone because it's so thin. And you have to do a lot of coats. So it's very tedious. Now, if you're a type of person who don't mind you know, keep putting on layers and layers and layers. And this is the product for you. However, for me, I, I ain't got time to be keep on putting different layers on epoxy. I work with epoxy. I do three to four coats on my other projects and be done with it. Whether the, I mean, far as with this bright tone, you got to put on, I had to use like, it depends on what I'm doing, but you have to like add like seven, eight layers or something like that. I don't know. I don't, it's too tedious for me. But with my comb and brush set, we're going to be rocking with the bright tone. Okay, so let's get it. So, we're going to go ahead and use this. And all we need is a small drop. This is going to be our first coat. So, we don't... It's going to look like we didn't put nothing on it. That's fine. That is what we want. We just want a drop. Don't get crazy with it and make a mess. Like I said, the consistency is very liquidy, very watery. So it's gonna look like we didn't do nothing, but that's fine because we're gonna add a few coats to this. So I'm just gonna take my bare fingers. Remember, we don't have to rock with no gloves to, on this product. We don't have to wear gloves. So I'm just gonna take my finger and smooth it on. This is the first coat. Now, if you run your finger across it, you can kind of feel that it's kind of not smooth. That's okay because as we build our layers, it's going to smooth right on out. So on the edges, you can kind of feel the water slide paper. That's perfectly fine. But when we get done, it's going to be all nice and smooth. Again, this is our first coat. So just go ahead and coat the image. And boom, there it is. That's it. And that's all. We're going to wait three hours, and then we're going to come back and put on another coat. Hi, you guys. We're back with our brush set, and we are going to put on the second coat. So let's get it. So we're going to go ahead and just put a dot of the bright tone. We don't want a whole bunch, just a teeny tiny bit. And rub it on. Just like that. Make sure you get those edges. And it's still going to feel a little rough. That's okay because this is only our second coat. And then that's it. And we'll be back in another three hours to put on a third coat. Okay, we're back. Now we're going to be working on our comb and brush set. We're going to be blinking it out. Now we already prepped our brush. It has our image in it. And then it has two coats of the bright tone, the crystal lac. So it already has our crystal lac on there. This is what it looks like. And now I am going to show you the glue we will be using. We're going to be working with E6000. Everybody should be familiar. If not, E6000 is a very popular glue. There's pros and cons about it. However, I haven't had any issues with it. 
Um, a lot of people do not like the smell. It does not bother me. And I've been, I use this with a lot of my projects. I never had an issue with my rhinestones falling off. Um, so if it's not broke, why fix it? You already know the old saying, so I'm going to stick with my E6000. However, you can use whatever type of glue you will wish. The rhinestones I will be working with is from Blingy Thingies. On, she's on Etsy. That's where I get mine from. This is what it looks like. Now, these are not glass. These are risen rhinestones. Look how pretty. Look at the quality. So pretty. You, man, if you did not know your rhinestones, you can't tell me these ain't glass, but they're not glass. They're, they're risen. But a little tip I would like to share with you is if you're new on trying to buy your rhinestones and you go to Etsy or anywhere, matter of fact, um, do a sample. Like do a small sample bag like this. Um, I think it was like $4, $4 or $5. I can't remember. And um, that way you can see how long the shipping is, how long the quality, because I can't tell you how many times I ordered off of Etsy from different people and I get my, my, um, my order and it's crap. Even though, you know, they say you get what you're paid for, it, I, I was highly disappointed, man. There were so many defects inside of my bags. It, it kind of made me mad because most of the, like a third of my bag, I couldn't even use because of the defects. This, uh, her blingy thingies is the, man, she gets two thumbs up from me because the quality is amazing. There's hardly any defects, and they're so pretty. They are so pretty. These are five millimeters, which is equivalent to the SS20s. Um, she has a chart that comes in with all with your order. Let me get that for you. I got stuff sticking. See, you can see I have tape on the ends of because I have this um, taped up where I work at downstairs. But you can see it has, if you're not good with um, the sizes of your rhinestones, if you're new to rhin um, doing rhinestones, she got your back. She has this chart that comes in your order, and it has the different sizes, either the SS sizes or the, M the millimeter sizes. Ain't that neat? Not only that, she also, in every order, she has, she'll give you a free gift. But what's great about this free gift is it's not like just any like crappy gift. No, look at the quality of this. I mean, I do a lot of projects. I, I'm a creative person. Look how pretty. And it makes you want to order more stuff. Because you're looking at these and you're like, now if she didn't have these in her orders, then I wouldn't know nothing about it. But since she placed these in our orders, like, you know, it's, it's a plus for us and it's a plus for her. Because now I want to order more stuff. I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like, man, I could do all types of stuff with this. Look how pretty these are. Different sizes. They're not all one sizes. And every order should give you a free gift. The packaging is great. The shipping, I never had a problem with shipping. I mean, the shipping is amazing. Okay, now let's get back to our project with our brush set. So, I'm going to go ahead and bling this out. Again, these are 5 millimeters. These are risen. These are not glass, but they're just as pretty. If you look, just as pretty as the glass. And the price is right. Do you hear me? So, with that being said, I'm going to bling out this brush and we will be back.